morning campers. So yesterday we did a lot of traveling. We went all the way up the coast and across um, through various little towns. I didn't really vlog it because we were just relaxing and, and really it was a lot of travel. We've come inland now and last night we arrived quite late at this place and we're out in the countryside now. It's so quiet. I feel almost guilty speaking out here because it's silent. Um, just hear the animals and the and a little bit of the crickets going in, on, in the background there. And I'm staying in this place. It's a lovely rural house, which we're sharing with a, with a few others. It's, it's run by a family up here. And wow, what a contrast to San Sebastian. Um, there's complete silence, complete, uh, complete contrast because the, uh, the smell here as well, you can smell the, the grass and the, the kind of wetness of the, the vegetation and all that. Uh, it's actually like being back at home, so it's the closest I've found to kind of like a, a British countryside. And we got in quite late last night, so we've only just got up, had some breakfast a couple of minutes ago. And I'm still kind of a bit dazed, so excuse me if I'm not completely coherent. Um, but today we've got a couple of excursions planned, but more of a relaxed thing today because yesterday we covered a lot of miles. And uh, yeah, but wow, what a beautiful area. It's all just mountains, trees. Uh, farmland and uh, yeah it's absolutely spectacular the name of the town which we're closest to actually eludes me um, I think I'm just overloaded with town names after yesterday but I'll put it in the description or mention it later on and I would highly recommend coming to stay at this place if you're ever in this region of the Basque Country because uh, the family here are so attentive and so nice we've got another couple of nights here and I know they're gonna be great because uh, they're so friendly the room's really nice, really clean, and it gets great reviews on all the websites. So I'll, I'll put a link to that as well, because uh, if you're ever in this part of the world, you should check it out. Uh, okay, I'm just going to go and wake up a little bit, and I'll check in a bit later on. Take it easy. All right, so we just stopped off and had some lunch close to this town, Bermeo. Um, most of the towns along the coast here are actually fishing towns. Uh, there are trawlers and little boats parked up here, or moored, I should say. Um, we parked as well. We're never sure in these places exactly where and where you can't park because, uh, as I said, they're all very small little villages and tourism, I think, is still quite relatively new to this area, so they're not really prepared for vast quantities of cars. Um, so it's a bit potluck, uh, just kind of driving around, trying to find somewhere to park. But well, we've managed it legally or not, I don't know, but we're parked. So we're just going to have a quick wander around here, have a coffee, and then head on to the main destination of, uh, of today, which is somewhere very special from the Game of Thrones universe. Uh, we went there early, but it was so busy that we decided just to go for lunch instead and come back later. So um, the weather's coming in. You can see behind me there's... Uh, it's been a bit choppy today. There's been some storm clouds brewing and a little bit of rain coming down, but uh, after scorching to death nearly in, uh, in Catalonia over the last couple of weeks, I've really enjoyed the change of temperature. And even a bit of rain has been welcome. It's almost actually British rain. It's that kind of drizzly, just kind of gets you wet without even realizing it sort of rain. Um, and I never thought I'd say it was welcome to see it, but I've actually really enjoyed getting rained on a little bit. So. Um, we're going to grab a coffee, uh, it's getting pretty windy here now so I'm going to head down and then onwards and I'll tune in a little bit later. Take it easy. Alright so I've arrived at Dragonstone as you can see behind me. Not quite the imposing castle you'll be used to if you're uh, watching Game of Thrones. But, and also no dragons, which is slightly disappointing. I was expecting to see them flying around or all that sort of thing, but sadly not. Now, important to note, we just arrived and we managed to get through the access point. He gave us a ticket, but uh, he said the guy, um, the vendor just told us that in the future, if you want to come here, they're going to start taking reservations and you'll have to do that via the website. So I'll try and put a link in the description to the website. So if you ever do come to this part of the world, 
uh, you'll be able to make that reservation because you don't want to come all the way out here and then not be able to come and see this. It's quite spectacular. It's just a monastery basically. Uh, we're now going to do that walk all the way out there and I'll try and get some photos. But for Game of Thrones fans, uh, here you have it. Here's Dragonstone. It does have a, another name. It's San Juan de something, but it's pretty much unpronounceable to me. So again, that will all go in the description because uh, I don't really want to do the, I don't want to butcher the name and do it in injustice. Uh, okay, be back later. Okay, we just came down this part. Uh, if you do decide to do this, I'd recommend wearing trainers or boots because these rocks are not the easiest to come down. I'm supposing it's going to be the same later on when we go up there to where Stannis and the Red Lady might be having dinner or something. But yeah, you'll definitely need some good footwear to do this. Uh, if not, you're going to chafe and uh, yeah, you're not going to be happy. Well, after you come down a bit, it actually changes onto a, a road. So it's a little bit easier on the legs. Um, when I say that, we'll see how I get on going up the steps. But uh, yeah, you've got the, that little part as well, which I think you can see in the, in the series also. The two little kind of loop things there, the McDonald's shape <laughs> in the middle of the sea. Uh, so we're going to continue on, see how we get on. Wish me luck. Okay, about to head on up. Um, needless to say, ladies and gents, if you're going to do this, you don't need to be an Olympian or anything, but you're probably going to need to be in you know, respectable shape. Otherwise, you're going to suffer a little bit. You've got a really kind of steep decline to start the walk, and then you've got to get up there, and you've got to come back down. So, as I say, you don't really need any specialized training or anything like that to do this, but um, to be in some kind of <laughs> decent physical shape will help you. Um, I think I forgot to mention before when I was talking about the ticket arrangements that it's actually free to come in here at the moment. Uh, they have a habit here of, you know, if anything is successful over a short period of time, they'll monetize it very quickly. But currently things are, you know, it's still free to come in. You just need to make the reservation, which at the moment shouldn't cost you anything. Um, but we'll see how long it stays that way for, unfortunately. So it might be a good idea if you really want to visit this place to do it as soon as possible. All right. Enough chitter chatter, time to get up there. So the principal path you can see is basically steps and cobbled stones. Uh, steps and cobbled stones, so it's not too hard to climb, but if it were to rain for whatever reason, I might find it a little bit more slippy. But here, at the moment, touch wood, not too many problems. Well, I made it to the top, sweating. It's not overly difficult, I guess, but the heat, the kind of humidity here today has made it uh, a challenge. You know, you work up a sweat. Uh, it took maybe 15, 20 minutes. And we did some stops on the way up to take some photos. So um, I would recommend that you are kind of in shape, as I said before, though, because it's, uh, it's pretty steep. Right, so we're just gonna have a quick turn around here at the top. We're actually right here now at the, at the place. Let's see if I can get a better photo here. So this is it, it's, um, it's actually a hermitage. Not really a military installation or anything like that. Certainly not a castle. Um, and as you can hear as well, it's uh, kind of free for the kids to go and play with the bells. So they go in there and start you know, swinging around on them. Um, but yeah, well worth a visit, well worth a visit if you're ever in this area. It's a really beautiful place. The sea's kind of wild, you can see why they chose it for the, uh, for the series. And yeah, it's just a beautiful scene. And if you come in the afternoon, uh, don't come in the mornings, it's much busier. If you come in the afternoon, you'll be able to get up here without too many problems. It's still busy now, there's plenty of people, but um, it's much more relaxed. You're not dodging past people on that little path down there or anything. And uh, yeah, you can kind of just take your own time instead of being pushed along by the, by the crowds. All right, so stay tuned. I'll put up some photos and uh, check back in a little bit later. Okay, back in the peace and tranquility of the countryside again. That was fun today, I enjoyed it, getting up and down 
um, to Dragonstone. I keep calling it that. I know it's uh, San Juan de whatever it is. Um, but yeah, what a wonderful place. And although it was, I have to say, a bit more challenging than I thought it would be. Uh, I thought it would actually be quite easy. It's deceptive in the sense that you have to go down to go up and you think you've done it, but then you, you remember that you've got to go down to go up again. And that final up to get back to the car park is, is quite steep. And it's, um, you know, you work up a good sweat. Uh, you can see all the, I passed quite a lot of people on the way back and they were, they were suffering quite a lot. So poor things, um, but well worth doing. If you are in the area, just bring some decent shoes to do it, especially if it's raining. It didn't rain today, but you would, you'd have problems if it did. And uh, yeah, you need to be in relatively decent shape to do it. So after that, all we've done is basically pop into town, uh, pop to a supermarket today and just got some, some food for tonight. I've been eating out too much, so um, I'm just gonna get some, uh, one of those box salad things for tonight. And yeah, watch a bit of TV and relax. It's about eight something, it's 25 past eight. So we haven't got, uh, haven't got to kill a load of time. So it's gonna be a, a quiet evening. And yeah, the sun's still up. Um, I can hear a few crickets starting now, but if I just get up, what a place to be, you know, it's just surrounded by countryside. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to take some photos of the room as well, because I really do recommend if you're in this area of the world to come and stay at this place, as I said this morning. Um, so I'll put some of those up as well so you can see. And yeah, I'll wish you all a very good evening. Thanks for tuning in and we'll be back with uh, some more stuff tomorrow. Good night.